Introduction to Turing Machines Around year 1936, there were no computers. Okay. There were no computers. A person by name, Alan Turing. Alan Turing. He actually proposed a model for abstract machine and that was called as Turing machine. He, it was given the name after his name, Turing machine. And this Turing machine was capable of performing any computational process carried out by computers. Okay. We have already learnt about finite automata. Finite automata is used to recognize regular languages. We have learnt about pushdown automata. Pushdown automata is used to recognize both regular and not regular languages. Turing machine is capable of accepting all type of languages. So it 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 will it can accept all type of languages. Turing machines can be used to do accept all type of languages whether it is a context free language or a regular language or a context sensitive language whatever may be we can design a Turing machine to accept any type of language so it acts as language acceptor Turing machine is used to do compute functions compute functions so in our uh, next coming videos we are going to see using Turing machine how how to accept any language any particular language or using Turing machine how to we, we can design a Turing machine that computes certain functions so we are going to see examples on all these uh, topics now coming to the definition of Turing machine Turing machine can be defined with the help of seven tuples seven tuples q sigma q naught f delta gamma and blank see here we are familiar with q this is a set of states sigma is the set of input symbols or alphabets q naught is the initial state f is the final state delta is the transition function gamma is the input tape symbols input tape symbols and B refers to blank symbol, blank symbol. Now, delta for Turing machine is defined as Q cross input tape symbol tending to some other state cross change in tape symbol with either a left, right or halt operation. With a left, right or halt operation. Now, to better understand how, what is this transition function, we will look into the data structures used in Turing machine. See, in Turing machine, we will be using only one input tape. The input tape will be divided into cells. Each cell is capable of holding one particular character. If no character exists, it means that it is occupied with blank space. The Turing machine is having only one data structures like this, but it is having a powerful header this header is capable of reading writing and all so it is having an input tape and a powerful header which is capable of read operation write operation okay this blank can be replaced with the a this blank can be replaced with some x or something like that reading writing is possible whereas in push down automata we had an input tape and we had a pointer to that tape we called that pointer as x pointer and we had a stack data structure and we had a pointer for that stack we called that y data structure y uh, pointer so here no such x pointer y pointer exists in turing machine instead it is having a header which is capable of moving towards right left and it can halt in one cell also it can read and write perform write operation and all okay now this header is connected to a finite control finite control this finite control will have transition transition function all transition function so the transition function is defined like from a current state from the current state all transition function 
will look, look into the current state and the current symbol in the input tape. Current symbol in the input tape. Current symbol in the input tape. Based upon these two, it will move to another state with some change in the input symbol. Some change in the input symbol with either a right move or left move or it will halt in the same direction. This right, left and halt is the direction of this header. This header is capable of moving towards the right or left or it can remain in one cell. So, it will, decide, it will tell you what direction next the header will move. So, this is how we will be defining the transition function in a Turing machine. Now, that's all we have for this video. In the next video, we will try to learn and design, uh, learn how to design Turing machines for specific languages.